Solid versus elastose. What are the differences? That's what we're going to cover in this episode. Let's go. So I've gotten a couple of questions from viewers asking what are the major differences between solid and elastose? And as you've seen, in the last couple of videos we've covered what solid is and sort of what that means for the internet regarding data governance and data ownership and those sorts of things, and that's Tim Berners-Lee's project. Uh, in this video we're going to cover um, solid versus elastose, and really they're two completely separate projects trying to tackle the same problem but from really different angles. Um, and Elastos has been gaining uh, quite a bit of popularity because of its affiliation with blockchain, which of course is the distributed ledger technology that powers uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a bunch of different you know, cryptocurrencies. But it's important to know that Elastos is actually not a cryptocurrency project. It was actually conceived back in 2000, many years ago, uh, from some ex-programmers at Microsoft, and uh, they're kind of tackling it from the operating system level and not necessarily just as like a coin or whatever, although uh, the cryptocurrency aspect is, is one part of the Elastos tech stack. So people really need to stop thinking of Elastos as a currency um, because the cryptocurrency piece is just one aspect of it. Um, people also need to stop thinking of Elastos and Solid, for that matter, as a new internet because both actually leverage uh, the internet infrastructure um, you know, that we know today. Uh, if you really wanted to create a new internet, so to speak, uh, you would start developing you know, kind of pure mesh technology and uh, redesigning the, the pipes and everything like that that actually make up the internet, you know, the tubes. Um, but in reality, um, that's a massive undertaking, requires a lot of adoption. Um, so yeah, th these are actually sitting on top of the internet. Um, and as a matter of fact, for that matter, um, Tim Berners-Lee didn't invent the internet. He invented the World Wide Web. So that's a very important distinction. Um, so Elastos uh, has a couple of different components. Um, it does actually have this whole Elastos blockchain, and that blockchain is really a wrapper around the Bitcoin blockchain. And every block that's actually mined in Bitcoin um, and every transaction that's actually posted to the ledger in Bitcoin is actually consequently posted to the one on Elastos, um, but not the other way around. Um, Elast or on Bitcoin, you've got um, blocks being mined you know, roughly every 10 minutes, uh, whereas on Elastos, it's gonna be about every two. Um, so really, um, you know, you've got quite, uh, quite a faster uh, method of actually, you know, verifying these transactions and, and, you know, putting blocks onto the blockchain with Elastos, which is very important. Another key aspect, though, is that Elastos um, is basically designed as a virtual machine. Um, they're, they're tackling it from the platform perspective. So you've got this virtual machine that's sort of device or platform agnostic. As a matter of fact, it really has no recollection of the device that it's running on and the the internet is the operating system that's kind of the saying that you'll hear repeated over and over again regarding elastos um, so an application will run inside of this virtual machine and has no contact with the host operating system as well as no contact with the internet directly all of the network traffic that flows from virtual machine to virtual machine on the elastos network will actually flow through the elastos carrier network um, the carrier network actually does reside on top of the internet, but is its own actual peer network. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network. And we've seen this again and again with Nutella um, or Kademlia, which is sort of the cord DHT that runs BitTorrent, or, or at least for the hash lookups. And in those networks, each node did have its own ID, you know, similar to an IP address, but was much longer oftentimes and much less memorable. Um, those IDs commonly were hashed from certain pieces of information, either a random number or a CPU ID or a MAC address. Um, IDs are actually generated on the Elastos carrier network by uh, the blockchain. So the, the blockchain will actually generate an ID, it'll be stored on the blockchain, and that can be used as a source of truth for all the nodes on the Elastos network. Um, the other piece, though, to be completely aware of is that the Elastos network, or, or the, the nodes that are speaking, um, encryption uh, is commonplace. So communications are encrypted end-to-end. -end. 
which is very important. Uh, it's very hard to intercept that traffic. But from a traffic sniffing and interception point of view, um, the data routing paths on the Elastos peer network can also change. Um, whereas on the internet, typically, they, they tend to route themselves through fairly known entities. Um, so it's sort of, you know, a, 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 you have a VM within a physical device. You've also got this internet within an internet uh, type thing. So they're kind of tackling it from that perspective. And again, it's at the operating system um, it's at the operating system level. One other important piece that actually uses the blockchain in the Elastos tech stack is the transaction of commerce. And that's commonly what a lot of people think of when they hear cryptocurrency or blockchains or those sorts of things. It's either swapping the coins themselves or, of course, goods and services with those. Um, so when you have this digital asset, you're going to have to pay transaction fees, which you will actually need Elastos's coin, ELA, um, and that will actually cover your transaction fees on the network. Well, things can be implemented on top of the Elastos blockchain that leverage um, scarcity. For example, you have 5,000 of an asset that are created and those can be traded or, or the, the ownership can be transferred. And then sort of how that content is consumed is directly governed by its implementation within the Elastos virtual machine or with an application that runs on the Elastos virtual machine. So, um, you know, a clear thing might be audio, um, you know, music, works of art, those sorts of things where you've only got so many of them and I can give or sell this music to you, um, you know, by, you know, transacting with you using the Elastos blockchain and then it actually leaves my virtual machine and then consequently you have sole rights over that copy that I have just sold you or given you or whatever. Um, so they're kind of catering to a lot of, um, you know, commerce, uh, those sorts of things, which is very important because one of the risks with Elastos is one, it's a huge undertaking. It's very ambitious. Um, people can only participate in the Elastos network that really have these VMs running. So there's this special software layer that has to be taken into account. Whereas with Solid, um, services can take advantage of that without any special network or, or whatever. All they really have to do is speak Solid protocol, which again sits on top of protocols that are already standardized by the W3C. So Elastos has quite a bit of legwork um, in that area kind of garnering adoption. And that's a, that's a key difference um, because really with Elastos, anything can be a digital asset though. My data could be a digital asset. That song that I just mentioned could be a digital asset, eBooks, et cetera, all that stuff can be digital assets. Um, same thing in Solid, but the plumbing is a little bit different between Solid and Elastos. Um, and with Elastos, um, you've got these VMs, but you've got this layer of security because, again, the VM has no concept of the device it's running on. Um, but I really think that both Solid and Elastos, it's going to come down to a land or expand type deal. Um, maybe instead of focusing on how to create a new internet or whatever and garnering this mass adoption where really no one's going to use Elastos if they can't find anything on it or if there's no use for it, um, and no one's really going to use Solid if no services integrate with the Solid protocol, what they need to kind of do is land and expand and focus on industries where data governance is key. So think of things like medical record storage or, or, or things like that, things where you might want to give the patient direct control over that data and ownership over that data, and they only share that data with parties that are you know, approved explicitly by that patient or you know, some agent. So I really think that, that that's the case because in those industries, they're oftentimes willing to pay to solve these compliance issues and, and different things. Now, of course, the downside is that they are oftentimes heavily regulated and introducing new technology into those markets can really be a pain, but there is a lot of opportunity there. So I honestly think that the future um, of these companies might actually sort of begin by focusing on heavy, you know, heavily regulated, you know, business areas, you know, sort of B2B and not B2C um, because obviously B2B, they're a lot less price sensitive. Um, so those are some of the core differences that I see between Elastos and Solid. Um, I think that, again, both are solving 
issues that uh, are very prevalent, obviously, not just due to Facebook and Cambridge Analytica or Google's, you know, Google Plus breach, you know, that affected, you know, you know, millions or hundreds of millions of users, um, not just the two that use Google Plus. I think that the, these are important issues that remain to be solved. And I honestly think that the both of these are extremely great projects and they are backed by individuals that are some of the most suited in order to solve this problem. So anyway, um, I guess that about wraps it up for this comparison of Elastos and Solid, just sort of a Sunday evening tech edition, if you will. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, critique, whatever you want. And uh, you know, stay tuned for more solid content. Got some great stuff coming up and we'll see you in the next one.